The Wanderer class mod for Slay the Spire is one of the most well designed, fun, and polished class mods I have ever played. I think the polish is something that really stands out here. I imagine it would be the big selling point for a lot of people because there is some amazing artwork, some great animations, and even professional level of voice acting. Wait, what, what is this place? This mod is a community project headed by one of Slay the Spire's biggest streamers and one of the best players in the game when it comes to Ascension 20 Act 4 win streaks, Jorbs, who has designed all of the ideas, mechanics, and most of the cards of this class, while the community puts in a lot of work to code, test, and create the art for many of these cards that look so beautiful. Jorbs is a very analytical and meticulous player. If you go to his YouTube channel that I'll link below, you can find many videos of him going over spreadsheets of Slay the Spire data for hours on end to identify the strengths and weaknesses of certain cards and mechanics. His content is really helpful and insightful, but the reason that I bring this up is because the Wanderer class is a class designed to really appeal to these types of players who want to go super in-depth and think really hard about the options given to you because it gives you a lot of options. There will be many turns when playing this class where you'll have well over 20 different decisions to make because there are so many variables and there is so much going on with this class. It's a ton of fun for me and for the type of player who enjoys that kind of stuff, but it might not be the right fit for everybody, especially for a new player or for someone who seeks a simple and easy to follow experience. Love it or hate it, either way, you have to admit that this is one of the most polished and interesting classes out there, and I would love to talk about it. Do you ever tire of our endless dance? The Wanderer is a very old wizard who has been wandering around the spire with this book that has eaten all of his memories. He doesn't know what he's doing, and he doesn't know why he's doing it. His total loss of memory is the main mechanic for this class. All of the orb slot looking icons floating around him are his memories, all forgotten until you remember them using many different cards and relics to give you many different interesting passive or even active effects. Your starting relic, the Grimoire, will make you remember patience at the start of each combat. This is the very first memory on the wheel. It's one of the most basic and one of the most useful. While you are remembering patience, every single card played will stack up this buff called Coil which will be used up if you remember any new memory to deal its stack number as damage to all enemies. Being able to stack up these coils is very useful in the early parts of the game and can be easily evoked with your two starting cards, Fresh Adventure that deals 13 damage and remembers another memory, Diligence, that we'll talk about later, and Eye of the Storm, a skill that gains clarity of your current memory, remembers a new random memory, and then gains 7 block. Usually, you can only remember one memory at a time, because this wizard's brain is not working correctly. If you were to remember a new memory, you would lose the effect of your current one. This memory loss can be fixed with this clarity mechanic from your Eye of the Storm starter card and many other cards. Clarity simply locks the memory in place for the rest of the combat, allowing you to have multiple active at a time. This is really strong, and it's basically necessary by itself, but it becomes even more strong with cards like Magic Missiles dealing damage once for every clarity, and some other really powerful clarity scaling cards. So let's actually look at these memories. There are 14 in total, there's 7 virtues and 7 sins. There is at least one card that specifically remembers each memory alongside another interesting effect, but all of these memories can be rolled into through Eye of the Storm or through many of the other cards that remembers a random memory. We already talked about Patience, which is given by your starting relic. It's a really nice damage boost for the first couple of floors, but can become way stronger with some cards like Prepare that gives you block equal to your coil and stacks coil 7 times, and many cards that give you these spammable material components like Book of Tongues and Materialize to allow you to play a bunch of cards in one turn and stack up a ton of coil. Remember that you do really have to think about the order of the cards that you play when you're stacking up coil. For example, you don't want to remember a new memory at the start of your turn because you'd rather play like the 5 extra cards to get that 5 extra damage off from your coil, right? Diligence is another memory that can be remembered right away with your fresh adventure starter card. When you remember Diligence, you'll draw 2 cards and you'll be able to retain a card at the end of your turn as long as you still remember it. 
This card draw from the memory can be activated even if you already have clarity of it. An example of another card that remembers Diligence is Double Check, which grants 5 block and remembers Diligence. The upgraded version will give you clarity if you still remember Diligence at the start of your next turn. Chastity will give you 2 Dexterity and apply 1 weak to all enemies when you remember it, and its passive effect will make you lose 1 Dexterity in return for 6 block at the end of every turn. This is a really interesting memory because it has an insanely powerful remember effect, but its passive effect can be detrimental if you keep it going for too many turns. You'll find this memory in powerful defensive cards like Rest that remembers Chastity, gives you some block, and then ends your turn, which gets you the 6 extra block and automatically loses you 1 dexterity. Kindness reduces all enemy strength by 3 while well, you remember it. If you forget Kindness, the enemies will regain that strength. This is a really strong defensive memory against groups of enemies or multi-hitting enemies. It can be remembered through cards like Aid that will heal an enemy for a small amount and remember kindness. Humility is all about thorns. Every time you remember humility, you'll gain two thorns. Its passive skill will give you two additional thorns until forgotten, but even when you forget this, you will keep the thorns given to you by the first active effect. Hedge Wizard is one of the very powerful cards that remembers humility while gaining a bunch of block. You'll be rewarded very heavily for constantly forgetting and then re-remembering humility multiple times in a combat, gaining two extra thorns each time. Charity's passive effect gets you one strength for every 100 gold you're carrying. You can hoard a ton of gold through events, relics, and cards to make this really powerful. This can be remembered with a card like Old Pocket that gets you 5 gold and then remembers charity. The upgraded version of that will instantly give you clarity. Temperance is the final virtue. While you remember it, you'll be given 1 strength per clarity that you currently have. This can potentially go up to 14 strength, but I've never had it get that high. A more realistic number would be around like 5 to 8 strength with a heavy clarity focused deck, which can be insanely powerful with magic missiles, this uncommon attack that attacks multiple times per clarity that you have. A card that remembers this is Stalwart, which simply just remembers Temperance, and the upgraded card will give you clarity right away. Those are the 7 virtues. They're all pretty good effects that you'll be pretty happy to see all the time, but some are much better than others in certain situations. Such knowledge, if only we could converse. The next set of memories are the seven sins. Most of these sins have some sort of downside and a very, very powerful effect that you are really happy to see. Lust is the first sin, and there is no downside to it, but while remembering it, all of your attacks will apply to burning. Burning is a new damage over time effect given by a bunch of different cards. It functions almost identically to poison, except it doesn't go through block, it loses a third of its stacks per turn, and it stops enemies from healing. The numbers given by the average burning card as well as the burning from lust are a lot higher than the average poison card to make up for it losing a third of its stacks. This makes it feel like a much more bursty version of poison, which is a lot of fun. There are a lot of cards that remember Lust. Fireball is one of the most generically powerful cards, remembering Lust and dealing 18 damage to all enemies, and the upgraded version even applies 4 burning to all enemies as well. Envy will apply a stack of vulnerable to yourself when you remember it, which is a pretty bad downside in certain turns, but its passive effect will make you apply vulnerable every time you target an enemy with a card, which is insane. A really strong card that remembers this is Color Spray, which deals damage to all enemies, applies a random debuff to each, and then remembers Envy. This is one of the more dangerous memories, but it can be amazing if you're able to remember it in a fight on the right turns where the enemy isn't attacking or you're able to block enough anyways. Sloth will discard 3 random cards upon being remembered, and its passive effect will make you draw 1 less card but also gain 1 extra energy per turn. Randomly rolling into Sloth at the beginning of your turn is always a ton of fun, but the passive effect can potentially be good if you have a lot of high cost cards or maybe an X cost card, but most decks would really much rather draw 5 cards a turn rather than 4. A card that remembers this is Unseen Servant, which remembers Sloth, puts 2 cards from your discard on top of your draw pile, and then draws one of those cards. 
The next few sins are all about meta scaling. Meta scaling is where you scale really any stat that lasts beyond a single combat, usually permanently throughout the entire run. You'll see what I mean. Wrath doesn't really have a passive effect that benefits you during the fight, but if you kill any non-minion enemy while you're remembering Wrath, the attack used will permanently gain 1 damage for the entire run, which is symbolized by this flame icon below the card's cost. This is one of the strongest scaling mechanics for this class, especially when you stack it onto a multi-hitting attack. A really cool card that remembers this is Death Throws, which has a lot of new keywords. Entombed means that it starts the combat in your exhaust pile. Exhume whenever an enemy dies means that it will leave your exhaust pile and go to your hand whenever an enemy dies. Ephemeral simply means that the card will exhaust when it's played, when it's not played, and when it's discarded. So basically, this card will come into your hand every time an enemy is killed, and you can use it to deal 14 damage for, for 0 energy, and remember or gain Clarity of Wrath. Randomly rolling into Wrath during a combat can put you in a very interesting position, where you might want to consider not playing any other cards that remember until you get Clarity, or maybe extending the combat to a point where you can draw the card that you really want Wrath to stack on. I think it's a very fun mechanic. Greed will get you 10 extra gold for killing any non-minion enemy. This doesn't give straight up power, but the gold can be really helpful in shops, or maybe for stacking up your charity memory. This 10 gold per kill can really stack up quick when you have a solid card like Locate Object, which will remember Greed and then draw up to 4 cards. Gluttony will simply raise your max HP by 2 for every non-minion enemy you kill, but you have to pick one card to discard at the start of your turn while you're remembering it. This is really strong meta scaling. randomly rolling into this right before killing an enemy is really the dream, but its downside does really suck so you don't want it to be active for the entire combat. Feast is a 0 energy rare card that will remember gluttony and draw 3 cards. Pride's passive effect will automatically upgrade a random card at the end of your combat, but it also makes you lose 2 dexterity until forgotten. This dexterity loss is obviously a pretty big deal, but upgrading your cards is also a really big deal, so you'll often be in a position where you're weighing the pros and cons of taking a few extra points of damage to get your pride off. Determination is a rare 2 energy card that remembers pride, and forces you to snap at the end of your turn unless it's upgraded. I have no patience left for gods. With all of these powerful meta-scaling memories, you may be tempted to keep every fight going as long as possible so you can remember all of these, but there is a very important mechanic that stops you from doing that. On turn 7, the Wanderer will snap, dealing damage to all enemies, losing some HP, and then losing all of his memories. This is a very detrimental effect, especially if you are heavily relying on memories for your damage or survivability, or if you're trying to get these meta-scalings off. This snapping mechanic really changes the way you play and think about this class. You'll usually want to end most fights before turn 7 because of this. Upgrades that give innate to powers like Book of Tongues or Find Familiar are so valuable because of this. While snapping can be really rough, there are quite a few benefits for snapping as well. The first big one is that your Grimoire Starter Relic puts the zero cost card in your hand when you snap that lets you choose from three material components and then constantly returns into your hand every time you play four other cards. Another minor benefit is that your starter card Fresh Adventure will permanently gain one extra damage every time you snap, which can potentially stack up if you're snapping a lot. The biggest advantage to snapping involves many different cards that have a huge bonus when you're snapped. One of my favorite common cards is Fractured Mind, which will gain a bunch of block if you remember a virtue, deal a bunch of damage if you remember a sin, or do both if you are snapped. There's also Mind Worm, a card that's very similar to Ironclad's Anger, except it deals over double damage when you are snapped. There are also a few cards that make you snap early in return for a ton of damage, like Purge Mind that will exhaust all cards that remember in your deck and then deal damage once per card exhausted, and then cause you to snap. This mechanic is really a balanced check to make sure you don't scale too hard with some of the crazy memories and cards that this class has, but it's also a dangerous mechanic that you can play with to either be heavily rewarded or heavily punished. This is the Wanderer Trilogy mod. So are there three Wanderers? No. 
but there are two more classes planned for this mod in the future, the Cull and the Explorer. Almost nothing is known about the Explorer right now, but the Cull can be played by checking the Cull Early Access box in the in-game mod config settings. This class is really early access right now, I'm not going to talk about it much because things can drastically change, but I will definitely be making another video in the same style when this class comes out, although it looks like it's not nearly as complex as the Wanderer. So let me give you the basic idea of this guy, the Cull specializes in ending fights as fast as he can with some absurdly powerful cards and defending with intangible, also using his maximum HP as a resource. The big core difference with this class is his manifest, which can be seen on the top right of your screen. Every turn spent in combat, your manifest will increase. When you end that combat, you will have to skip that many floors to climb the spire. The only exception is the chest rooms and the final campfire that it will always let you climb to. He will also waste away during combats, losing 1 maximum HP every turn and losing 1 more every single time he takes attack damage. A really interesting thing about this class is that he remembers Wrath at the beginning of every combat, which allows you to scale some of his cards by an insane amount. He also can't rest at campfires, instead he can thirst, which consumes all of the Wrath stacks on a card, healing 5 HP and gaining 1 maximum HP each. So that's the Wanderer and a little bit of the Cull. I really wanted to showcase this mod on this channel because I love it so much. It's so much fun to play, it offers so many strategies, and it has some amazing artwork and an amazing community behind it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully I was able to help you understand this class better or help you understand that this isn't the class for you and at least got you excited for the two other classes coming in this mod. So have a great day and I will see you next time. At last. Please let this be the end.